Good morning. I'm Donna Carrick, your host of Dead to Rights, the podcast, and uh, of Carrick Publishing. And I'm here today with my very good friend, Lisa DeNicolitz, my fellow May Dam of Mayhem. And uh, we're here to talk about In the Spirit of 13, which is our, I believe it's our fifth anthology, which is coming out in the fall of 2022. And I'm really excited about this. With our Maydams and Messieurs contributing, it's going to be a hefty book of short stories, a real collection, and there is some superb talent in this, not the least of which is my very first interviewee, Lisa DeNicolitz, with her story, In a Land of Fear and Denial, which is a wonderful title. I love it. And I see now why you could have called it The Takalosh. And you also could have called it Tracy and the Takalosh, but I think you did right in choosing In a Land of Fear and Denial. It more and captures the story. So Lisa, thank you for joining me this morning. Can you tell me what is a Takalosh? A Takalosh is a very evil little spirit who will come and uh, he enters the orifices. So he'll creep into like your ears or through your nose or something. And there's various, if you look up visuals of the Tokolosh, you will see um, some, some visuals of them. The Tokolosh is still in South Africa today, believed to be a very prevalent little evil creature. So um, it's not something from way back when. And the tradition was um, uh, for, to put your, your uh, bed onto bricks so that you would elevate so that when you were sleeping the tokolosh didn't come and you know infiltrate your body and take over and that was just too glorious an opportunity the minute we mentioned 13 spirits the tokolosh immediately came to mind he is perfect and you've done something that i love i love stories that reach into themes i love when the author takes their time and thinks through what they really want to say. Now, the story's not really about the Takalash at all, although he figures prominently. Can you tell us what he represents? Without he giving away too much of the story. Yes, without, without any spoilers. Well, um, it represents everything bad that was happening in South Africa in um, the apartheid era. And actually, Life in the, the apartheid era is quite, um, I'm going to say, um, topical right now. I've read two books very recently that touched upon it. Da Damon Galgut's book, The Promise, recently won a Booker Award. And Dawn Promislow has released a book very, very recently called Wan. That is W-A-N by Freehand Press. And it's an extraordinary work. And I feel that like with my story, like we're all reflecting upon that time. And it's something that we don't want uh, just forgotten because it was a terrible time and so it's you know you don't want to just sort of move on and go well that's in the past because it's by writing about things that we pay homage to people who really suffered in those times. And for people who are just entering the writing world Lisa's done something really that a good seasoned writer does here and I want to throw this out there nowhere in the story does Lisa preach about the situation. She just tells her story and lets you draw the inference and the inference is, is undeniable. Um, you know, it may be a land of fear and denial, but you cannot deny it. It's beautifully done, Lisa. I really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you, Donna. Now, before thank I get you. carried away, let me ask you to send me by email the names and authors of those books, and yes. I'll post them in the I'll post them in the under section of the YouTube video, so that, that our, our friends who watch us can look them up. You know. Exactly. Now, finally, because I'm character driven, I've got to ask you about Tracy. I oh, recognize yeah. Tracy. Tracy, I know Tracy. I know she's in there. <laughs> Tell us about her. I think I think a large part of me um, did relate to Tracy, uh, the little girl who was scared of everything and um, who was um, overwhelmed by so much um, in life. And then she had the cool sister. The cool sister, am I, is actually 
my sister is the cool sister. She's actually the younger sister, but I've always felt like she's the older sister. So I really loved writing about the sibling relationship. And uh, uh, yeah, my sister's definitely more Dory and I am I'm definitely more Tracy. So um, it was really, it was really fun to get inside her head and, and hang out with her for a while. I was very fond of her as a character. She was wonderful. I really liked her. And as I said, I recognized her almost immediately. I hope I'm not being presumptuous. But no, no. you and I, you and I, my lady, we are survivors because we may have been afraid of everything in our lives and yet we keep on doing. We just it's keep on so doing. It's so true, Donna. We it's, have it's, to take a moment and congratulate ourselves. That's the height of courage, isn't it? Doing the things yes. when you are afraid. So anybody yes. can do things when they're not afraid. So, you know, you're quite right. Yes, let's they take a moment. sure can. And that's a wonderful note to end on because I want our listeners who are breaking into any of the arts to hear that. You may be afraid. You may feel you're unworthy. Just do it anyway. What the exactly. heck? What, what the, the heck? Double hockey sticks. Yes. <laughs> Squash that takalash. <laughs> that's exactly. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate you joining me. Is there any last words you've got for our listeners? I no, just to say that I'm so excited by our anthology and it's amazing like on anthology number five like we're an amazing amazing group and I'm just constantly thrilled and honored to be a part of it so I just want to awesome. thank you and for all your hard work and to all my mama dums I just love you all and I truly mean that not sort of so, you know just saying I, I truly do each member is very close to my heart we're good friends as as well as writing co you know colleagues so I feel exactly the same, Lisa. I really do. And thank you. Thank you for always being part of us and uh, a really vibrant part of us. Dusty road, man alone. His vital signs go on hold. And I don't know what you've been told. But the years have turned my eyes gold. And I told you what you told me. We'd never be in the same boat for free, yet it rides, let it rock.